Welcome back to Reading Java Code, Module 7, Error, Messages, and Errors. Uh, this will be covered over three slides. Uh, hopefully, we'll get it done quick. Uh, there may or may not be any examples that I will provide, but I will talk through it. Uh, there are basically uh, different types of error messages that you may come across. One one of the first ones that you may have seen in a, in a program that you may have ran in the past or even uh, recently, uh, unlike, I mean, nothing that you may have written, but something that you downloaded, uh, uh, an app, uh, desktop computer, or something like that. But these are runtime errors that I'm going to talk about. A runtime error is an error, is errors that occur that prevent the program from loading. What that means is this, you can go to the command prompt or you can double click and try to open up a program and nothing happens. We call that a runtime error where the program can't even begin to run. It can't be loaded. That could be because of several reasons. We call these errors, these errors are environmental and aren't easily discovered in testing. Why are they not easily discovered in testing? It's simple. In a test environment, you have your databases, your tables, your uh, libraries, and everything built right there into your integrated development environment. So everything is kind of self-contained in the black box. Everything is self-contained and packaged together when you're developing. That is your development environment. Many times your development environment will not mimic your production environment. And this can cause these types of errors. Even though Java is a portable language that run on many platforms, each environment must be properly configured for the Java application to run. How does this tie back to bullet number two? It's simple. Like I said, your development environment can be configured one way, and your production environment can be configured quite different. And an example of a runtime error can simply be, uh, let me see if I can pull something up to show you. Hold on one second. Here's an example in NetBeans that I, that I can show you. This is a, um, a data class that I use in one of the programs that I've written for uh, a program. And this has the database utilities that creates the database connection. So here we have, as you can see, I call this my development and testing location on my MacBook. The location is this right here. Okay. System development, usher, scheduling system forward slash data forward slash USS dot DB. This is the production location right here. If you notice, it's different. A MacBook does not have a C or D drive uh, reference to it. It uses slashes and a uh, root directory type system. Um, so, with that said, if you look at this, you see C, system, dev, dev, user scheduling system, data, USB. You see there is a different location, not the same as the, the uh, test and development location. If I comment this out and uncomment that, this will compile no problem. This will compile no problem. But on my development site, this location doesn't exist. So at runtime, when the database loads, it will get an error because it can't find it. So this is the type of error that is not easily found or detected because the program will compile, won't give you any error messages, no error warnings, anything, because it, it, it doesn't check the location while it's sitting like this as a file. It doesn't check this location 
when it's compiling, it only checks this at runtime. So we have to be careful of that. So again, these types of errors can be, uh oh, these types of errors can be environmental in nature just on how the PCs are configured. So these are hard to detect and find. Um, just understand when you run into a runtime error where the program doesn't load, you may want to look into the code just like I just showed you, where you would locate, you know, things that are external to the code, where there's a library, an image file, a data, a database or a data file. Those are things that are not within the build. So those things have to be in the proper place so you do not get a runtime error. Let's move on to the next error. These are syntax errors. Now, syntax error is, 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 is quite different than a runtime error. Errors that are introduced through coding. Errors that are introduced through coding. What does that mean? That means a developer is developing and he does something or he forgets to do something and it creates an error as you see here. Now here an example. This looks correct, but what this developer failed to do, if you remember from my for loop, he forgot to initialize, because it tells us here, a variable i might not have been initialized. This needs a equal zero or equal one or some number. So therefore it has not been initialized. This is called a syntax error. These errors are known before compiling and running the code. So what that means again is you should be able to just look at this and see this error here. The program won't compile with this error. So this is this is one of these ones that you you, you find at development. So this type of error should not make it to a tester. But in some cases, this could have been properly done with the equal zero and Someone could put some something there and hit enter by mistake, don't know it, and send the code on. So these types of errors again are introduced by the developer. These errors are typically accompanied with the type and solution messages, as you see here below. It tells you what type it is, and it kind of tells you also what you need to do. So basically, it's a variable error. It's not initialized, so basically it's telling you you need to initialize it. These errors may also have a red underline, as this one does. You see the red squiggly line, and if you hover over it, it will produce this message. This may not be true in all IDEs, but it is true in NetBeans. And also, you'll get this, this light bulb here with the question mark, red, letting you know there's a problem. So again, these types of errors are introduced by developers themselves, or programmers. On to our next error. These are application errors. These are similar to, uh, I would say, a runtime error, but the application is actually running at this point. Why is this significant or why is it not? Well, it is very significant. These errors are probably the hardest ones to find. And the only way to truly find these types of errors is to use a debugger. The errors that are neither syntax or runtime, but are introduced through coding. Okay, what does that mean? Uh, a application error could simply be something like, if you're going to add two numbers together, and the two numbers that you're adding are not correct, and you don't check to make sure they're correct, you will get an erroneous er an erroneous answer. See, that's an application error. The application loads, the application runs but it doesn't produce the proper output. These are not known at compile and runtime. You will not know that your calculations are wrong when you develop these types of errors into your code. These errors can only be caught during extensive testing. So you have to write very, very good test cases or use a debugger to follow a variable's value throughout the process. Okay. 
Many IDEs have the ability to debug code by setting breakpoints and stepping through the code line by line. This allows the tester to see the variable's value in real time. So basically, as you see here, this is called a breakpoint. And if we ran this program, which we'll simulate shortly here, it will stop here. And you'll be able to see the, the value of this, the value of what, whatever other variables you have, you will see those values down in a window. So this is a very, very useful tool to use to discover and to find application errors. That concludes Module 7, and we will now move on to the quiz 8.